Hi there, I'm Chris Rachel Loseland with the Austin Post. And I'm Gavin Stone with Fanboy TV, and we are here with Matt from It's Not You, It's Me. So go ahead and let, uh, let our lovely audience know a little bit about your movie to get us started. Okay, um, well, it's about, um, it's about a girl whose boyfriend, um, every, like, basically every sound that he makes starts to annoy her, and their sort of relationship takes a dark turn. I kind of spoiled it for them earlier yeah. when I was talking oh, about you did? it. Okay. Right. I was well, gasping. I was like, oh, it's that one. He dies. One. Yeah. She has to, she has he's to, not the only one that dies. He is, was, he's not, but quiet, let's not, not give too much away. Right. You know, someone well, might want to watch this. I think <laughs> what I enjoyed about this movie the most is there's that true, honest nature of every relationship where something annoys you. No yeah. matter what. Mm -hmm. Granted, yes. it may be noises. Granted, it may be, hey, they clipped their toes funny. Everybody has that weird thing, but they don't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. And this movie really brings it to light. But she really takes it to an extreme. To say the least. Now, yeah. is this based on a relationship you've had in the past? Um, <laughs> you, well, you know, it's funny. I, there, I did have a, a girlfriend in high school who was very sensitive to people eating. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I couldn't, like, if I was eating cereal or something, I couldn't, she couldn't be in the same room as me. Or you had to go like this? I don't have, yeah, I don't think I'm, like, a disgusting eater. Maybe mm -hmm. I am a disgusting eater, but I don't know. But I, but she would have to leave every time. And so really? it wasn't really based on that, but I do think it's a kind of relatable. I think people are very sensitive yeah. to, to sounds. And it's a really nice way of actually bringing this type of movie. I, I'll say horror. It's a little bit of a horror, yeah. We'll go ahead. Horror, Let's psychological, say horror, yeah, thriller. dark comedy. Yeah. Dark, dark but it, comedy. it's a good way of making that more relatable because there is that one thing that everyone's like, yeah, I, you know what, I'd do it too if I had that right. going on in my head. Yeah, I think you. I think anyone can be driven to the point of you know. I mean, she she doesn't really murder him per se. You know, I mean, it's. I think <laughs> it's. Spoiler alert! Yeah, there is a death. There but. is a death involved. You know, but then yeah, I think uh, as the thing progresses, you sort of start to see her unravel. You mm -hmm. know, and she gets pretty dark. Which you found this fine balance between dark and comedy. Mm -hmm. I love the comedy aspect of it. I was not expecting the comedy aspect of it, but about that right. point in the midway, well, I was like, kind of this like is a pretty Evil Dead vibe going on. Great. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you. Have you done other dark comedies before this? Do you plan on doing more? I love dark comedy. I mean, I, I was talking to someone earlier, and they related it to, like, Shallow Grave and, like, Very Bad Things and those kind of movies, yeah. like Fargo. Like, those, those are kind of my favorite. I never mm -hmm. thought of Fargo as a dark of... comedy. I really, I think that's so, I think that's so funny. I think Boogie Nights is like a dark comedy too, but maybe I have a very broad definition of <laughs> That would be definitely very comedy. broad there. Um, how did you find this woman to play the lead role that could display that straight up range of emotions from beginning to happy, to psycho, to happy, to psycho? I mean, it's like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, um, I don't, you know, I just sort of, we had a, I had a casting director friend who agreed to help us out, and mm -hmm. she sort of sent the script around, and, and we were lucky, I think, to get Gillian. I don't know, do you watch Community? Yes. She's, yeah. yeah, okay, so, I mean, we, I knew who she was and was familiar with her stuff, so I was really excited that she wanted to do this, so I met with her, and she was like, yeah, like, let's, you know, I was like, we're going to get you bloody, we're going <laughs> to, you know, and she was totally Which she doesn't get it. to do on Community. Which she does, yeah. Not that I've not that I've seen. Maybe no. there's an episode. But I'm sure when they watch this, they'll be like, "We need to write her some killer roles in this show." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think she did a really, really good job with it. I actually had her. I, my like reference for her was: Have you seen? There's this old film, Repulsion, with Catherine Deneuve. This Roman Polanski mm -hmm. film. Obscure, Sorry. Okay. But she's like, it's about this woman who is a, she's like disgusted by men. So like men try to come on her and she gets she has, gets like freaked out by them mm -hmm. and so she's like locked in her apartment one weekend and she starts to go crazy and imagines all these men are sort of trying to break into the apartment to like attack her and she literally goes insane so it was kind of it was a little bit of a reference there and I thought they kind of look similar I mean you know it's, you see the, the this movie. is also a very <laughs> effects heavy movie yes yeah how did you pull some of that stuff off like the first death spoiler alert was pretty awesome it was, um, we actually shot the in, in my apartment. Oh, in really? My, Fake yeah, blood everywhere? Yeah, in my, my living room, yeah. <laughs> and um, I didn't tell my landlord about it. And so, so you, she, you like, just showed lost up. Well, that would have been funny if she'd be coming to an apartment check at that time. <laughs> yeah, I think she heard people were like, uh, there's, like, glass breaking, there's, like, blood spraying, we don't know what's going on here. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a combination. It was, like, a little bit practical. We had a stunt guy do a fall. We actually smashed. He didn't actually fall through glass, but we mm -hmm. did. We had a guy, like, do a smash, and we filmed it, and then sort of, like, married it all together in post. Mm -hmm. And then we had a guy pumping blood through, like, a dummy chest. We, there were, like, so many elements and, and 
my buddy uh, Steve, who did the VFX, is like, you know, he's this. He loves this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He loves horror, and so he re he really helped us like figure out how we would do it because I don't. That's not my background, and so. What is your um, background with this sort of thing? I mean, You're I. You're gonna say romantic comedy, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I do. I mean, I've I mostly am a screenwriter. I've done. All, I've written a lot of comedies, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, I think. But I think my own sensibilities as a director were more, are more, you know, a little darker maybe, mm -hmm. and so. Um, so yeah, but this is like one of the first things I've really directed and put my name on as director, so I'm excited to. Well, it's a good thing to come out of the gate with. Yeah. How did you find suitcases big enough to fit people in? <laughs> that was a Spoiler challenge. Spoiler again. You know, I was, I was worried when we got the suitcases, I was like, to my production center, I was like, I don't think it's believable that a person would fit in here. And then we actually had, um, my producer's boyfriend was like our stand-in for Fran, who when he gets, when uh -huh. he falls. And um, and Fran had to leave like throughout the, he had like a family emergency he had to mm -hmm. leave and so we were like great like who's going to be this body in the suitcase and so we actually had him put on the shirt we were like he looks kind of the same so we put on the shirt and he actually <laughs> climbed into the into the suitcase and he fit we were like so amazed that he managed to like wow. squeeze himself into there see I just sort of assume with that that maybe maybe people are cut up before they're put in a suitcase not this movie no well, <laughs> well to give the benefit of the doubt yeah. things like this there was a scene I when I first wrote it with, we there was a scene where where she. I was like, it's, that's too... Too much. That's too much. Heaven yeah. forbid. In, well, in a suitcase is one thing, but chopped up to fit in a suitcase? No. Yeah. No. Well, it, well, the interesting thing is, is you didn't see this coming. Yeah, yeah. You really, like, it just seemed like, okay, they're going to break up, and then things go downhill <laughs> fast. <laughs> but my favorite was the very last scene. Which, you should see it. Seriously, you've got to watch it. It's so funny. And it simply, it just made me laugh. And I felt bad for laughing. You know? <laughs> Good. You should. I like, you should feel terrible I should for be laughing, laughing like because this is really, really bad. But it's so funny. Have you had reactions like that when people are screening it? Yeah. I think some people think I'm a genuinely disturbed person for, hey, you for fit doing right that. Here. Some people don't think it's a comedy. They're like, you're really? just terrible. Yeah, I think it gets, I think, a wide variety of reactions from people, which I always think is like is interesting. Just to, You never know when you make something how mm -hmm. people are going to react to it. So it's just, you kind of just have to sit back and just take it how, how it comes, you know? But I think the right people think it's funny. I think the, <laughs> the, the, the really if, wrong. it's like a good litmus test of like, like if I will get along. If you think that the, <laughs> the ending is funny, so that's what you're like. It Hello, was new hilarious. friends, watch my movie. What do you think? Yeah, anyone who likes anything that I've done, mm -hmm. I think we can be we can be friends. Well, I like this, so yeah, we can be friends in the future. Great. I want to see more suitcases and more blood spurting out everywhere. So, what do you actually have? Do you have anything planned for the next films? Yeah, well, I, the reason why I did this was because I, I wrote a script, a uh, feature script that I want to direct. So this was okay. sort of like me trying to, like, break out as a director. Not break out, but, like, you know, get, break myself in as yeah. a director, I should say. And so that's the, hopefully the next thing that I'll direct. And, mm -hmm. um, and I also, um, my producer, Max, is actually, we write together, and we have a script uh, called The Coward that he's going to direct that I'll produce. So hopefully we'll make that later this year. Great. Yeah. Well, I hope you're having a wonderful time at South by Southwest. Great time, yeah. So it's far, I've only been here for like 48 hours. <laughs> really, two less days? than 36 hours. Yeah. Wow, that's so that's not a long. We're just getting into it here. Like a whole week to go. Yeah, I'm here till I'm here till Wednesday. I think I fly out at like 6 a.m. on Wednesday. Is there anything so, you're so. looking forward to looking watching? Yeah, I really I'm so excited to see Spring Breakers. Really. Speaking of dark comedies. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, and uh, Upstream Color. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know yes. this. Yeah. I'm really a big fan of that director. I'm a huge so fan of that director. I'm, I've been, I <laughs> hope I get to see that. I think it's playing right now. Hopefully I'll get yeah, to see the next one. Yeah, that's why they're not one. here because we had a schedule. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So best of luck at South by Southwest. Thank you. Thanks, guys, endeavors. for having me. Let's see some more dark comedy come out of it. Awesome. Great. Thank All you. Right.